Hey everybody, I'm going to show you guys how I make maps in Roll20. Uh, this is a pre-done map right here. As you can see, I've got some tokens on it that can move around. And if I want to check their vision, you can hit Control L and select a token and move it around to see just what it can see. Uh, so all I have is a blank map called Cragmaw Hideout. There's nothing special on it. And it is a blank canvas. So from Windows, I'm just going to drag that image on there onto the map and background to, uh, layer. Just drag that image straight on there and it uploads for a second. And there it is. So I'm going to zoom way out, see if this is big enough. It is big enough just to fit so it seems like it's not perfectly to scale but it's pretty close I'm going to make this a drawing so that way I can free move it around without having to hit buttons and it looks like I need to stretch it out a little bit so I'm going to make this map way bigger just to make sure that it's plenty of move around space and while I'm here I'm gonna go ahead and change this to Pathfinder because I like diagonals Everything else I'm going to leave off for now. So I zoom way out, holding Alt while I mouse wheel. And I'm going to do this one dimension at a time. So the easiest thing that I can do is find the leftmost grid line, which looks like it's going to be this one here. And I'm going to just line it up to the nearest one. I need to make these squares bigger. So take the right hand edge and go out a little bit until I get what feels right. And then I come back over here, make sure that it's still in alignment. This takes about three or four times to get right, maybe more. It's never going to be perfectly aligned, but I do the best I can. And that looks pretty close, but I think I need to do one more adjustment. And there don't think I'm gonna get it much better than that okay so that's the left to right alignment I'm gonna do the same thing top to bottom so I'm gonna find the closest vertex right there and I need to go down some so I'll do that just some arbitrary amount that feels right and then check and see if I'm still in alignment A little bit too far actually come back to the nearest line right there and alignment try not to move the wrong axis a little bit back and that's probably about as good as I can go most of the grid lines line up but it won't matter because f first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the grid lines because the map already has them. So grid, it's going to stay on. I just turn the opacity to or the opacity to nothing. So now the only grids that are going to matter are the ones on the map already. Um, so that's all you need to do to get the grid aligned. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom way out, and this isn't really necessary, but I like to do it. Um, is reduce the size of the page back to what it was at the beginning and just make the adjustments to get only the map on it. So let's try 30 by 20. Uh, that looks right. So cool. Uh, I'm cutting off the top of it but that's on the other side of the wall so it won't matter so much. And this is the fancy side. I go to the dynamic light, uh, lighting level draw shape and I change it to blue so it stands out a little bit more and I make it as thin as possible uh, for doors I usually do a red line so that way you can select them separately uh, to delete them when doors get opened but this doesn't look like it has any doors so I just zoom way in and usually I don't snap to grid because it doesn't make that big of a difference but for I'm gonna make sure that this here is hidden so I'm gonna start drawing here one click and then another click, I just try and get as close to the edge as I can and close it. Do the same thing on this side just to make sure that this key doesn't show up. Alright, um, then I 
just start tracing walls out? This is only going to block vision. It will not show up on the map. This is what takes the most majority of the time. But with cave walls, it's pretty easy. You just kind of loosely follow it. Uh, every single one of these is a left click. And then when I want to finish a section, do a right click. I try not to do that until I have a whole wall done. The level of detail is up to how much you want to click and how much zooming in you want to do. I always try and make sure I leave a little bit of the actual wall visible because that way they can tell that it is in fact a wall and not just a void. And I'm scrolling to the left of the right by holding down shift while I use the mouse wheel.
might go a little bit too far to help with the vision overlay not showing up in a weird manner and I think that's gonna cover all the exterior walls I just zoom in around to look and see what I got to do on the inside and then I will right click to make sure that that line is entire or entirely connected uh, then I just have to go back and do these interior ones Uh, when you get close to completing a line like that, it automatically joins it, so you just have to right-click again and it will finish the line for you, uh, which exterior walls don't always do so well. Okay, that's all the bigger features here. Uh, there's some, there's a couple of weird spots here, like right here is a chimney that I don't particularly want the players to be able to see through, but I may need to remove at some point. So I'm just gonna take another uh, different color, I'm gonna make it red, and I'm just gonna draw one giant line to block it, but that's gonna be easy to select later. So that if I need to get rid of that, I can just grab it and delete it, or I can move it out of the way, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just want it to be able to block temporarily. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the area up here because this is a raised platform. I don't want them to be able to see through it going through the bottom. So I'm just going to take a long red line and cut there and a long red line and cut there. And that way when they're actually up on this second level, if they climbed up around here, I can just move those red lines out of the way. and the players will be able to see straight through. Um, for the stalagmites, I uh, for those I usually just use the default wall, but instead of filling it out I usually just put an X over it because that way you are able to see enough of it to notice what the feature is, but it still blocks the vision level. So a token, uh, that's how I had the columns on the other map set up. So they can tell that it's still a column, but it blocks enough vision. And it's really easy. So like if you have a character standing in this square, you know that they have you know line of effect. But the line of sight down here is so badly blocked that they uh, may have trouble. And these don't have to be exact. I just try to make nice X's. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, these bushes and things, I'm probably not going to draw anything except for a single one running like that. <laughs>
uh, just because there's going to be some guys back here. And I think that's going to be it except for tokens. So for tokens, I just go back to the uh, select move and I make sure that I'm on the GM info level because bad guy tokens, I don't want to show up at first. So I know there's some goblins that start in here. I have a couple of them uploaded already. So let's see a couple of my goblins. Let's throw down this guy and this guy. I think there's only two on the outside. So I guess I lost one of them. This guy and that guy. All right, so here's my, oh, nope, there he is. So they, uh, for these, you double click on them. They don't represent any particular character. If I wanted to and I wanted to have their stats in here, I could make a monster set up for them and give them stats, but I don't really care about that. So I'm just gonna call it Goblin 1 and Goblin 2. Uh, and they have nine hit points. If I put it out of nine, I can see their bar. And I make it so that the players can see the bar, but not necessarily the name, because they don't know that it might actually be a goblin. If it's some kind of mystery monster, you only want to make sure they can see the bar. And that's only if you want them to see their hit points. The show nameplate is only for me. So whether or not it's turned on and off, it doesn't matter. Uh, so nine, nine, uh, bar two. And then a simple thing you can do is once you make one of them, just copy them over and over again. But uh, that's if you don't want them to have the same picture and why you would do each one. Uh, has sight and all this stuff doesn't matter for monsters unless you want their sight to be kept track of. Um, and that's it, I just do that for every token that needs to be made everywhere. Uh, so now I go back over here and I want to turn, I don't ever turn Fog of War on because Vision hand, dynamic lighting handles it already. You'll want to use Fog of War if you don't have dynamic lighting. Enabled, enforce line of sight, Restrict movement means they can't move through walls, and global illumination is if you're indoors or outdoors. So this is mostly inside of the cave, so I'm gonna leave it off, and I'll set it up like that. The whole thing goes dark, meaning that there are no light sources right here. And I'm gonna go copy a couple of my tokens from the other one. So we've got this one, these two, and I know this one has dark vision. So dark vision is done by 60 foot radius of light, and it has sight, but not all players see light. Usually, if you want to give someone a token for light, you uh, make it so all players see light. Or make a different token to represent a torch or some such. I'm going to drop those, those tokens right here. And this guy is completely in the dark, he can't see anything, whereas this one has dark vision, and he can see uh, in dim light all the way around like this. Um, so what I will do to counteract that is I'm just going to search for light. Uh, see what comes up. Oh, not on my characters in the token library. So light, and I'm just gonna take one of these uh, hazes and put it down on the GM info level. And you know I'm gonna make it fairly big because it's gonna be the sun for all. I need to know. So we're gonna say that this sheds light, uh, we'll say 60 feet, but 30 feet of it is dim. And I'm gonna change that to token layer. And now, Oh no, no, you know what, I don't put it on the token layer, I put it on the map layer, and then uh, put it behind the actual map. So now, this guy can see outside, fine, and I need to put another one around that corner there so he can see it too. But once he gets up into the cave, uh, things get a little trickier and he can't see anymore. With this guy, however... He's got dark vision, so it's plenty bright out here. Once he gets inside the dim light, he can still see dim light. Uh, that's how vision works. Vision's not super important, but I like it. Uh, and that's how I do dynamic lighting with exteriors. So let me know if you need to know anything else. Uh, it's pretty quick and rough and dirty. And that's it. This was a good half an hour video. So.